I believe that in the future, no one will dare to deposit money in the bank. Do you all know about this matter of ICBC Bank? A bank executive from Nanning Industrial and Commercial Branch in Guangxi transferred the deposits of 28 depositors, totaling 250 million yuan. Now he has been arrested, but 120 million are still missing. The bank concluded that this is an employee's personal behavior and has nothing to do with the bank. According to the bank's ruling, the bank has no liability for compensation. This executive was sentenced to life imprisonment, but the bank has no liability to pay compensation. Who will come up with 120 million? I was particularly puzzled as to how this bank executive managed to transfer 250 million yuan and also make the whereabouts of 120 million yuan unknown. It's like, my dog bit someone and killed him when he went out for a walk. Now you've caught the dog. As for this dog, you can do whatever you want with it, but this matter has nothing to do with me. Do you think this law logic makes sense? If that makes sense, then in the future we won't have to repay all our loans because our loans were handled by bank employees, not the bank. Do you think this is reasonable? I brought 100,000 yuan to deposit at the bank. The teller asked me where I got the money. I hesitated for a while. I was speechless. I didn't know how to answer this question. Although I'd been working, I couldn't save much every month, so the 100,000 yuan was saved from parts of my husband's salary. I told the teller that I saved it myself, and he continued to ask me, how did you save it? Then the teller asked me to provide the details. I told him that I didn't have the details and it was all in the hands of my husband. I told the teller, if you can't deposit it, then don't. Why so many questions? Later, the teller said that I need to talk to their manager for instructions. Then the manager came over and asked me a few more questions, filled out several forms, and then asked me how I saved the money. It took almost two hours to make the deposit. It is very difficult for ordinary people to save money. We deposit it in the bank as we think it's the safest way to save money, but we did not expect to encounter so many difficulties. I wonder if I withdraw money in the future, will I be asked the purpose of my withdrawal? China's economic recession is continuing with the unraveling of the real estate industry. Many bank branches in China frequently experience difficulty in withdrawing money. Some depositors have discovered funds missing from their accounts. In some areas, depositors even smashed up bank offices. Recently, a woman in Henan was faced with difficulties when withdrawing 5,000 yuan from her bank. On January 23rd, Ms. Wang from Pingdingshan City, Henan Province, said that her sister transferred 5,000 yuan to her that day and asked her to go to the bank to withdraw some cash in small denominations to use for red envelopes for the Chinese New Year. But that simple transaction turned into a blow-up with the bank. In the end, she had to call the police in order to withdraw the money. This topic became a hot search on social media platform Weibo. According to mainland media reports, Ms. Wang said that the teller first asked her to download an anti-fraud app. Initially, she thought it was quite reasonable, but after the bank staff asked her to install the app, they still did not go through with the withdrawal procedures for her. Instead, they started asking her where her sister worked and where she had worked before. What was even more outrageous was that she was asked to prove that the person who transferred the money to her was her biological sister, and was also asked to call her sister directly. She was also asked to show the chat history with her sister. After checking the chat history, she was still not allowed to withdraw money. Miss Wang was very angry and scolded the bank staff on the spot. Later, she felt she had no choice but to call the police. After the police got involved, it took nearly two hours to withdraw the money. She felt very aggrieved, so she made a video and posted the incident online. She said, I was just withdrawing 5,000 yuan, 700 US dollars, not 50,000 or 500,000 yuan. Is it necessary to make it so complicated? It feels like they're deliberately making things difficult for me. In response, some netizens said, you have to go through legal channels to get your money out, and the real money launderer has not been found. Some netizens also said, put it in a safe at home and never save it at the bank. If the bank is going to make such an effort, they might as well study how to protect the security of their customers. Some netizens pointed out, the bank's approach is not to prevent people from being deceived, it's because they don't want people to take their money away. It's a bit too much. Not only are mainland banks having difficulty with customer withdrawals, depositors are also finding that their money is gone. Chinese media reported that Guangzhou woman Li Juan was the owner of a private company and earned a large sum of money through overseas trading a few years ago. 
On the advice of people around her, she deposited 10 million yuan in a bank in Guangdong. The bank told her that she could get hundreds of thousands of yuan in interest every year, which made her very happy. However, a few months later, when she signed a contract with a company abroad, she needed to pay a deposit of millions of yuan. She wanted to pay it from the 10 million yuan deposit she made, but she found that her account was left with only 62 cents. In August 2020, Li Zhen protested loudly to the staff in the bank about the disappearance of her funds. She asked the staff for an explanation, but the staff kept stalling, so Li Zhen decided to call the police. The police later investigated and found that some management within the bank abused their power and transferred Li Zhen's 10 million yuan to the account of an illegal trust company through forgery. It turned out that when Li Zhen was depositing money, Wei Guang, a bank manager, happened to pass by and learn that Li Zhen had deposited a huge sum of money. Later, Wei Guang needed money urgently due to family changes, so he decided to cooperate with illegal trust companies internally and externally to transfer the money in batches. The trust company hacked the system to disconnect real-time bank information from Li Zhen so that she would have no idea that the money had been transferred. After Li Zhen learned the truth, she immediately took the bank to court for negligence and asked the bank to compensate her for her financial and psychological damages. Regarding Li Zhen's complaint, the bank's lawyer stated that the bank had immediately investigated the dispute and actively cooperated with the police in collecting evidence. Moreover, the court ruled that the case actually had nothing to do with the bank's business model but was caused by the behavior of some bank employees. It cannot represent the bank, so the bank should not be held responsible. During the first trial, the court accepted the bank's argument and ruled that Li Zhen lost the case. However, Li Zhen was dissatisfied with the verdict and appealed. The appeals court ordered the bank to compensate economic losses of more than 4 million yuan and part of the interest. Not only is it difficult to withdraw money, now banks are making things difficult when people deposit money. The case of a woman depositing 100,000 in cash and being questioned about the source of the money became the most popular trending topic on January 8th. According to Chinese media reports, a woman in Jiangxi posted on a social platform that she took 100,000 yuan in cash to the bank for a deposit. After taking the cash out of the bag, the bank staff suddenly asked her how much money she wanted to deposit and where the money came from. The woman said that she thought to herself at the time, You don't care where my money comes from. Can't you do what I ask and just be done with it? You're acting like I stole the money. I asked the staff why she was asking this. I've never been asked so many questions to deposit cash before. The staff responded that this was the bank's policy. Some netizens commented, The banking system should really be rectified. The service attitude is dramatically different when you make a deposit versus when you withdraw money. The leakage of personal information cannot be said to have nothing to do with them. The moral quality of the employees should be carefully assessed. Last year, a woman from Huzhou, Zhejiang province, posted a video saying that she went to the bank to deposit 50,000 yuan in cash and was asked to provide proof of income and other materials, which also caused heated discussions on the internet. The woman said that the bank staff asked her where she worked, where her money came from, and proof of income, which made her feel like they were interrogating a prisoner. It is worth noting that because depositors were unable to withdraw money, banks were smashed in some locations. On January 16th, some netizens released a video revealing the smashing of the Qing Shui Pu service department of the Bijia Rural Consumer Cooperative in Guizhou. The video showed that the hall was in a mess, with several rows of seats toppled to the ground and plant pots knocked over. A depositor who did not want to be named said that now that something has happened, everyone is worried about their deposits, so everyone wants to withdraw. When met with resistance from bank employees, conflicts often occur. An owner of a shop near the Qing Shui Pu service department of the cooperative said that he has saved thousands of dollars at Bijia Rural Consumer Cooperative. I've been unable to withdraw the money for several months. Mine is all small money, tens or hundreds of thousands. A staff member of the sales department of Guizhou Bijia Cooperative said that at the end of October 2023, the cooperative had posted announcements in various service departments regarding the problem of financial constraints. As for why funds are tight, relevant staff said it might be due to the tight cash flow caused by the ongoing transformation of consumer cooperatives and the liquidation of stock financing service businesses. Chinese media reported that the inability of depositors at this cooperative to withdraw their funds is not an isolated case. 
supply and marketing cooperatives in various towns under the jurisdiction of Qixingguan District, Bijie City, have experienced problems with the withdrawal of stock funds. Mainland banks are in chaos, and some banks have collapsed, leaving many depositors with nothing. Depositors of rural banks in Henan Province have been unable to withdraw their money for nearly 700 days. They have held 15 protests, but the authorities have repeatedly used various means to obstruct and intimidate them. These methods include illegally freezing deposits, monitoring depositors' mobile phones and cars, setting red codes to restrict personal freedom, carrying out beatings and illegal detentions, refusing to accept lawsuits, framing and slandering, and launching fraudulent WeChat applets. On January 28, victimized depositors from Henan Rural Banks went to Zhengzhou to defend their rights. However, they were violently kidnapped by the Zhengzhou police and later released. A depositor named Xu said that nearly 100 Henan Village Bank depositors and their families went to Zhengzhou to ask for their deposits. As soon as they arrived at Zhengzhou East Railway Station, they were violently kidnapped by undercover police in the name of emergency drills and were later taken to Henan Financial Supervision and Administration. They were detained at a training center affiliated with the Bureau. Among those detained were minor children. The depositors' mobile phones were taken, and some elderly depositors were so sad that they cried bitterly. Xu said, Deposits have been robbed by officials in various ways for nearly 700 days. This is the longest, most frequent, and most difficult rights protection campaign in the history of the bank. Since mobile phones and cars have been located, depositors' ID cards and families have been monitored. The depositors' family and friends called the police many times, but the police from Zhengzhou Yongping Road Station ignored them and said, You are complaining. Why should I send the police? According to the depositor, a female depositor surnamed Tsai made a living by picking up rags and deposited 800,000 yuan that she had accumulated throughout her life in a village bank. However, she is now unable to withdraw the money, leaving her life in limbo. Recently, she was injured and unable to pay for treatment, so she could only make some simple herbal medicines and apply them on her wounds. Chinese New Year is approaching, and some savers hope to withdraw some money at this time for the holiday. However, they once again faced illegal kidnapping and detention by the authorities, putting their lives in deeper trouble. In 2022, many rural banks in Henan simultaneously closed online withdrawal and transfer channels without warning. Depositors were unable to withdraw their deposits, triggering panic and protests. Frank Xie, a business professor at the University of South Carolina Aiken, said that the depositors' money may have been taken by senior executives of rural banks and local governments to bribe senior CCP dignitaries. He said that according to data provided by a mainlander, a village bank in Henan has a capital of 40 billion yuan, involving all deposits. Of that, 20 billion was used to honor the family of former Politburo Standing Committee member Zheng Qinghong. There is still 12 billion yuan, and this is used to take care of officials at all levels. The remaining deposit is only 7 to 8 billion, and there is no way to repay depositors. Professor Xie said that financial risks in mainland China are getting bigger and bigger, and now they involve rural banks. He suggested that people should withdraw their money and keep it at home, because now the CCP is stealing through banks and will restrict withdrawals at every turn. In October 2023, mainland financial experts revealed a run on banks. What's new is that some depositors would rather give up accrued interest than lose their principal. The article stated that this attitude is related to the current economic situation. In recent years, economic growth has been sluggish and investment returns have declined, leading to lower expectations for bank interest rates. Compared with savings deposits and annual yields of less than 1%, people are more inclined to seek higher returns. The Chinese Communist Party's financial system is severely corrupt. This year, many senior executives of Chinese banks have come under investigation. On January 25th, Wang Zhibin, former party secretary and president of Hubei Provincial Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, was announced to be under investigation. It was announced on the same day that Yu Zhishui, the former party secretary and president of Shandong Development Bank, was also arrested and investigated. On January 16th, Fan Ti, senior deputy manager of China construction bank Guangdong branch, was reviewed and investigated. On January 16th, Chen Bin, chief researcher of the Bank of China Research Institute, was reviewed and investigated. 
On January 12th, Xu Xiang, former member of CIDIC Group's Discipline Inspection Commission and the former director of the Supervisory Board Office, was reviewed and investigated. Tang Jingyuan, a current affairs commentator based in the United States, said that the CCP's abnormal reforms have resulted in the financial sector being divided up by powerful politicians and businessmen colluding. It is the CCP system that has caused today's systemic financial risks. The Xi administration's purge of the financial system is mainly to engage in economic cutting, focusing on purging those who are politically unreliable and disobedient, placing the blame for economic problems on these people. However, China's financial crisis cannot be avoided no matter who supervises it.